Good morning, everyone. In today's lecture, we are going to learn about poles and zeros. So, if we defined excess as a function, means it's a Laplace transform of any function x t, and it's a rational function of s or you can define it as x s equals to a note means subscript a subscript 0 s raised to the power m a1 minus 1 and so on up to m terms and denominator is b naught s raised to the power n b1 and so on up to bn where this is your numerator polynomial and this is your denominator polynomial so if we take a naught and b naught common from denom uh, numerator and denominator both when i'm saying both a naught from numerator and b naught from denominator and we find the roots of the numerator polynomial and find the roots of denominator polynomial and let the numerator polynomials are denoted by z and the denominator numerator polynomials are denoted by z and denominator polynomials are denoted by p i'll tell you why z and p so if they are of this form they can be real or complex Now, why we use the numerator roots as z and numerator denominator roots are as p because we sorry for that because when you will put this above equation means the numerator if you see at the numerator numerator polynomial so it's basically your a note which is a constant it will put it equals to 0 so it will be equals to 0 for roots your z1 z2 and so on and z these are the roots of the numerator polynomial so when you will put s equals to z1 in this equation the this one z1 s equals to z1 or z2 or zm xs will become zero so that's why we we are using we are denoting it by z which means zero which leads to the function becomes equals to zero when you are using the denominator polynomial so denominator you have b naught s minus p1 s minus p2 and so on s minus p n equals to 0 so the roots of these equations are your p1 p2 and so on up to pn so when you will put s equals to p1 p2 
or Pn in this equation, then you can see that Xs will be equals to Xs at S equals to P1, P2, Pn will be equals to 1 upon 0 or you can say infinite. That's why we use P for them. We call them as poles. Poles of excess where the value of the polynomial becomes equals to infinite. We call them zeros of x of s. Now we have two things with respect to them poles and zeros. One is your proper rational function and a proper or you can say improper rational function. So proper rational function the condition for proper rational function is that when m is less than m and improper rational function when m is greater than equals to n what is m n <coughs> sorry if the power of numerator polynomial is less than the denominator poly it's a polynomial it's a rational function and if it's less than that the, or you can say greater than that sorry then it's a improper rational function so let's take some example on the basis of which it can be explained in a better way that how this thing works so it's also going to cover a bit of your properties of poles and zeros which I already covered in the previous lecture also now if I have a excess equals to x of s equals to 4s plus 5 divided by s square plus Five s plus six. So the roots of the denominator and denominator will be calculated like this. Take make the coefficient of s or whichever is the maximum power in numerator and denominator equals to one. So in the numerator the maximum power of s is one. So we will make it the coefficient of it equals to 1 so we took 4 out of it or you can say we took 4 common out of it and this one is already having 1 so we can find the roots easily and it will be of this form so we can say that I have 1 0 at minus 5 by 4 and 2 poles Poles are P1 equals to minus 2 and P2 equals to minus 3. So I just told you that in the previous the properties of ROC that, that ROC cannot contain any pole. So now we're explaining it in a more better way that if ROC will have poles what will happen if you will put s equals to minus 2 in this polynomial of x's then x's will become equals to 1 upon 0 or you can say it will be equals to infinite and same thing will happen for s equals to minus 3 so you can say the poles cannot be included in the roc 
as in that case it will be lead to excess equals to infinite now if you see at it and the question comes like that explain whether this function is a rational function or a improper rational function so you can see directly that the numerator polynomial m is equals to 1 and denominator polynomial is equals to 2 why it's m1 and 2 you can see from here What is the power here of this? 1, the power of s square is basically 2. So we can say that for this, this is a proper rational function or polynomial, you can say. Okay. Now, if we we are left with some properties of uh, Laplace transform for LTI system so the next topic is Laplace transform Laplace transform for LTI system L stands for linearity or you can say the linear system T stands for TI is basically your time in variant means with time the signal is not varying so if you are shifting input by a time factor t not then the output is also getting shifted in the same way linearity is basically if i so for the linearity condition i'm explaining them here again so for a linear system for a linear system your if you have two inputs x1 t corresponding to which you have output y1t and another in input x2t to a system corresponding to which output is y2t and we have another input which is a linear combination of x1 and x2 what is the linear combination means the third input x3t is equals to plus b times x2t where a and b are constant it can they can be equals to 1 they can be equals to 2 3 4 minus 1 means they can take any value which is constant they are not variable then for linearity for linearity if my input is a x1 t plus b sorry x to t then corresponding to it my output must also be the linear combination of a1 yt y1 t and b y1 2 t for the system to be linear now if my system is time invariant this uh, has been covered in detail in the prerequisite of this course so time invariant then if we have an input x1 t corresponding to which your output is y1 t and you have another input x2 t corresponding to which output is y to t where x1 and x2 have this relation x to t 2t is equals to shifted version of x1 t now for this to be for time 
invariance system for time invariant system my y2 t must also be equals to y1 t minus t0 then this is a time invariant system if this condition fails then this is a time variant system now the system which follows both the condition means the LTI system must possess both of them both the property the name is linear time invariant okay so if I say linear LTI system then linear time invariant system so it must follow both the condition or it must obey both these condition that it must be linear also and it must be not be varying with time or it's a time invariant system then it is a LTI system so this is can say one of the properties of two properties of LTI system now if we have the system is usually defined in this form that we apply input and you get output so your input is your let's say x of t and your output is y t or if you are using a discrete time signal then it is y n <coughs> sorry we are working on Laplace transform so we will use only the discrete time sorry the continuous time signals so there will be a system impulse response I'll tell you why it is uh, impulse response in one of the lecture then your yt is equals to xt convolution h of t or it is means both these are true okay so if you take Laplace transform of both sides as we have done in the properties of Laplace transform so taking Laplace transform of both sides we get y of s equals to h of s into x of s or you can say that h s equals to y is divided by x of s so it's h s this is your this so hs is comes out to be in this form now we have two more important properties of a system and uh, they are first is your causality causality with respect to the system so that is your another property so it's whether the system is causal or not not causality now for a causal system with respect to HT there are two things first is your causal signals and non causal signals and the second is causal system so whether the system is causal or not for that the condition must be that 
h t must be equals to h of t must be equals to 0 for t less than 0 or you can say or h of t must be a right handed system or you can say signal with respect to this is right handed must be your right handed and if we say the same thing with respect to Laplace transform of HT then ROC of the H of S is of the form the real S greater than sigma max that the ROC of the system must be greater than sigma max what is sigma max sigma max is the value of the maximum pole so just to explain you what what do you mean by maximum pole suppose I have a xs equals to 1 upon s plus 1 s plus 2 so we have two poles for this p1 is minus 1 and p2 equals to minus 2 so what is your maximum pole here maximum pole for us is minus 1 so your ROC must be of the form that it must be on the right hand side or you can say it must be greater than your sigma max this line says that here so if I plot it so this is your sigma this is your j omega so if I plot it then suppose this is minus 1 this is your minus 2 so your ROC must be in a way suppose I like draw like this your ROC must be in this area so that is what is meant by sigma max all right then the another condition for this for the system is your whether the system is stable or not so how we will check the whether the system is stable or not or how to check the stability of the system first thing is that when we say talk about stability the stability is always with always with respect to the input we apply so we call it BIBO what is BIBO stands for bounded input and bounded output so if you are applying BIBO BIBO means bounded input and bounded what this thing means it means that if you are applying an input which is bounding or bounded or we can say it's restricted then the output must also be restricted it should not be like that you are applying a very small input in a small range and your output is going above uh, like say suppose I'm applying only 0 0.001 of input and I'm getting 10 raised to the power 6 10 raised to the power 20 I'm getting that output then it is called as bounded output okay now another condition which uh, which uh, which is true for this stability is that with respect to your h of t or the impulse response of the system that for Laplace transform that minus infinite to infinite h of t dt 
must be less than infinite that means you are if you are integrating the impulse response the mode of the impulse response between minus infinite and infinite then the value must be less than infinite or you can say it should be absolutely integrable means you must be able to find the integration of it and the another condition with respect to hs is that the roc must contain j omega axis one more thing which uh, i forgot to mention at the time of causality is that that ht equals to 0 for t less than 0 means that your impulse response the system must not respond to any input before you apply input and i'm saying any input means there might be a noise there or something else so that's why your h of t must be equals to 0 for t less than equals to 0 thank you thank you for watching the video please subscribe my channel and provide any feedback any questions you have in the comment box